Hi, I'm Katie Scott from UPMC Enterprises, our Investment and Digital Innovation Division. Um, and I'm talking about connecting patients to their care with, you, with my UPMC. So jump in a little bit here to talk about sort of patient portals and digital strategy and, and how UPMC is thinking about that patient access, particularly in this, after this last year of COVID. Um, so how did we get here? What is our, you know, what is, what's sort of the background if that's, um, you know, a good place to start thinking about the, the US healthcare system and the portal market, I think is a little bit different. So context always helps. So, so back in 2008, uh, UPMC was a really early adopter of EMRs and a really, we had some really forward looking doctors that were interested in um, giving patients access to their data, recognizing that these um, new systems were gonna let patients see their care in different ways and, and interact with it more than they had in the past. So to let them be um, active participants. And so we were really forward looking at that point and, and had built some things that were really ahead of what the EMRs um, provided. And so we had built some of our own portals, we had built some of our own patient outreach tools, um, and we had sort of an early adopter community that was pretty involved um, and then built on some of the initial API frameworks that were available from the EMR vendors. So really some early um, strategic thinking in this space in, in 2008 and, and forward and realizing that we could really do something in the patient portal space to connect patients to what they the care they were getting. And so um, you know, around 2016, you know, sort of assessed and realigned and said, okay, that, you know, the market has changed, the EMR um, has advanced, there's a lot more capabilities available, there's a lot more vendors in this space, where do we want to play, what's important for us and for our patients, you know, if we want to see ourselves that sentence at the bottom, a patient focused digital first health system, how do we do that, where does the portal fit in this space. And we recognize that um, the patient portal and some of the um, digital transactions were really could be a hub to pull patients in um, for their care more broadly. So recognizing that that work we had already done, that infrastructure we had built was really important for us to position ourselves going forward. So um, recognizing that this could be our digital hub, this could be our you know digital front door is the phrase I think we hear over and over at this point, um, and recognizing that the portal was a big piece of that and a great starting point. So then as you think about you know 2018 until 2021, you know, starting to understand user needs, understanding where patients were. We saw all of our patients migrating to, to mobile. You know, 2018 was really um, a point where, you know, the web started to, to phase out in some ways and, and patients were really doing things in real time on their phones. Um, and so we started to build this critical mass on a, on a mobile app platform, you know, using the EMR data where it was, but it's beginning to extend into some of the other capabilities. Again, connecting patients to um, the care that they were that we were delivering and letting them involve get, letting them get involved digitally. So, by 2020, you know it's a it's been a it's been a fascinating you know 18 months at this point. You know, huge growth of telemedicine became sort of the de facto platform for patients to interact with us. We built some new digital workflows in there. I'll talk about that later. Um, but as we go forward, starting to see digital as this differentiator and as a business driver um, for how we interact with our patients. It's a way that we can be. Uh, you know, deliver great academic care, but at a very, very con in a very convenient way for our patients. Um, and so, as we look ahead, that involves multi EMR integration. That expand that that means expanding our consumers' access to their data. And this falls aligned um, aligned nicely with with um, a lot of the trends in the industry overall, like letting the democratization and and consumerization of healthcare, letting patients really be a an advocate for themselves in this space. So, so that's sort of the trajectory of where we where we started. I think we were sort of ahead in this space in in 2008, and now we're sort of circling back to um, circling back to that now and building on that infrastructure over time. So, as we think about sort of where we are, we see my UPMC and the patient portal as a digital front door for our patients. So the idea is not that every last thing is embedded in the app or is embedded in my UPMC, but that this is a place that you can always start. So this is a place where it will have nearly everything. It will, you will be able to search for something and get to it. You'll be able to look for a piece of information that you need and be able to get there. So seeing it as sort of the hub and a, and a reasonable start for patients to be able to go do the things that they need. So, you know, our, our goals and our ideas around it are, you know, pay, it impacts the patient experience, it impacts convenience and transparency, like I talked about, but that can be a real driver of patient loyalty. So if we're easy to work with, we're easy to book your next appointment with, we're easy for you to come back to, we're easy for you to connect with that doctor another time, you're not waiting on a phone line, you're not um, hoping for a response, we're, we're right there with you in real time, whether it's, you know, 9pm at night, or it's the weekend, you have access to what you need. Um, it's, you know, provide some digital alternatives to office workflows. You'll see how that how that comes back during this last year. 
and then um, you know access and venues for care. So so seeing this sort of as a partner, not as a you know I think initially if we go back to that timeline, 2008 it was it was a little bit of a hobby, it was a little bit of a side channel, it was an add-on, and now I think we really see particularly after COVID, it's a it's an integrated piece of care and it's an it's a necessary. Um, attribute and it's a patient expectation. They expect to, to work with us this way, the same way they expect to have their groceries delivered at this point. So, you know, after COVID, I think we're, we're seeing how this shakes out long term and, and, you know, we're essentially not going back to the way things were. Um, so we, if we skip ahead a little bit, you know, there's sort of a portfolio of opportunities around um, the patient portal. So the patient portal is in that top left. You know, this is where you do those typical transactions, you know, messaging your doctor, reading a test result, having a telemedicine visit. That's the core of the of the operations. That's the core of the of the feature set. But then there's these three other items that we add that we think of as, as part of that patient portfolio. So the provider directory, who is your doctor? Who are you working with? Who's that appointment with? How do you find the right person in the right location when you need care? Um, bottom right, contactless check-in. Again, getting patients, meeting patients' expectations, getting them into a visit and doing as much as we can on the mobile um, so that they can be, they can walk right into that doctor's office. They can walk right into the actual appointment itself as opposed to the paperwork and the, and the pre-steps. And then on the bottom left is, is a company called Zelf that we work with that um, offers a digital app formulary. So that's getting patients from my UPMC to a maternity app, from my UPMC to uh, remote patient monitoring or other tools that they're using that live outside. But having that, again, the, the, front, the portal is the front door, and then we take you to those other services that are targeted for you. So this is sort of the, the, the universe around the patient. You know, my UPMC is the hub, but these are the other pieces that are you know, supporting actors, if you, are, if you will, in that cast. Um, going forward, you know, I think we're seeing, you know, we saw this pre-COVID and we're seeing it certainly now. Um, the patient's interest in, in interacting with us digitally, you know, they're, they're, we're not pushing this on them, they're pulling it from us. And so, you know, we've got 1.3 million active users, that's about 59% of the patients we see in the office. Um, when we look at it year over year and, and, and look at a 12 month rolling, rolling average, we've got about 60% of our patients there. We were at about 45 um, before COVID. And now, you know, moving to 60, the idea that, you know, that's the majority now, and that's the majority certainly at the at um, certain ages and certain demographics, that's a that's the, the predominant method of, of interaction. And so what opportunities exist in there? Can we now behave differently? Can we can we use digital first because we have this level of adoption? So that's, I think, something interesting we can think about going forward. Um, but, you know, again, 4.8 stars is, is the App Store rating. We, we look at that pretty closely because we see it as a signal that Patients are doing this and patients find this valuable and this is important to them. Um, and so we're really we're really proud of that. And we really focus on it to make sure that we are we're not serving just our business needs, but we're serving our patients needs and they're getting what they need out of it so that we're able to provide that provide that connection. Um, and, you know, the, the uptake has been has been pretty fantastic. And I, I think patients are, are starting to really attach themselves and work with us this way. You know, 60,000 weekday users is is quite a few, right? And we see them we see them log in, you know, six, ten times a month for various things, checking an appointment time, looking at a test result, finding a bill, et cetera. And and that level of interaction, you know, we have early signals that it drives into other other loyalty, other favorability, other transactions, right? The more you, you know, sort of it becomes a habit, we become your partner. And having that be part of the part of the system, so you know I I mentioned this a little bit already, but um, you know thinking about adoption and satisfaction um, with our patients, and it's really you know it's not the it's not the young person's tool. It's not just you know under fifty, right? I think our average age at this point is between fifty two and fifty six. I can't remember exactly. You know, it depends on how you how you measure it. But um, you know, it's pretty well split across the demographics. We've got you know telemedicine users in their 70s and 80s who've been successful with the platform and are, are really happy to be able to get their care delivered that way. It's much more convenient for them. Um, and so we see you know we see this widespread of of users that we're interacting with, and they're using it in different ways, and they have different needs. Um, but it, we are seeing you know success sort of across that spectrum, and making sure that we are providing that success. Right, that's something that we can do. Um, we can keep an eye on them. We, we can make sure we need to make sure it's successful because our patient base is that broad, right? Um, and then on the top right, you know, net promoter score, industry sort of benchmark. Um, as we look at consumers, we're measured at excellent, which you know sort of puts us in the in the Amazon um, category, right at that upper end. And this is this is remarkable, mostly as a healthcare company, right? This is you know a 56 is a is a great score. There's many other companies that are up there, but for a healthcare company to be up there. We, you know, we feel pretty excited about that, which to me is an indicator that we're solving a patient need, right? I think the, 
um, the piece that we're, we're providing is digital access for patients that, you know, sort of exceeding their expectations. It's not something that you expect to see in healthcare. It's not as e it's easier than you'd expect it to be in healthcare. And there's still sort of that wow factor, which we even see, um, especially in some of the older demographics, right? Our, our younger users are a little more um, skeptical and sophisticated, and they've got many apps on their phones, and, and this doesn't work as well as, you know, something else that they're used to in the commercial space. And we see our older um, users and our baby boomers um, seeing it as, you know, this is really innovative to them. I didn't have to go drive and park and um, go through the snow or, you know, in, in the pandemic times, you know, feel risky going to see my doctor. I was able to just do it from home from my iPad, right? And, and having that be a, a really uh, wow experience and that reflecting on the rest of the health system. So seeing how this integrates to the rest of care. And then lastly, you know, the, the idea that we've got this broad, accepted, liked, platform with our users was really, really effective as infrastructure to use during COVID, right? So during 2020, we were able to take the existing platform and some of this existing adoption and drive to the, the workflows that we needed to add. So when we have, you know, we need to shift all of our visits from in-person, you know, 500x from in-person to telemedicine, right? Overnight, essentially, we had a platform that 40% of the patients already had. It was already on their phones. So it was easy for them to say, hey, click this button and get your telemedicine visit, as opposed to, okay, we built a new app and now it's here and go download it and, and get your telemedicine data, right? We had that infrastructure in place. Um, you know, it gave us a platform for, for reinforcing some of those health system and public health messages, right? 60,000 patients a day are seeing it without us really having to do much to push that message there. Um, you know, we, could, we were able to provide targeted information to, to key groups, you know, pregnant moms during the, um, during the pandemic. You know, we had specific messaging for them about things they should and shouldn't do, right? We were able to target those users based on some of the criteria in the EMR to say, hey, this is a specific message for what you're going through right now. And that, you know, that generated a lot of, a lot of interest and a lot of, um, a lot of help, you know, it took away a lot of phone calls and, and reassured a lot of people in a, in a scary time. Um, we deployed a chatbot again, similarly trying to, to solve problems as they emerged. Um, and then we were able to, again, you know, add new services as we went along. We're able to schedule video visits, schedule COVID tests, et cetera, you know, start to be an outreach mechanism for, for some of the vaccine information as those um, use cases came up. So having this platform in place, you know, we, we, in some ways, you know, that infrastructure and that investment really paid off during, um, during COVID because we had, we had the assets there to build on. So we had the patient adoption. We have um, some of the infrastructure and we, will, we were able to say, okay, how do we take this chassis we've built and use it for um, some of the new problems we're solving? So, so these are some of the, the small things I think, you know, again, as we, as we go forward, what if this is, is uh, sustainable? What if it is, is really COVID specific? But understanding, you know, we have these assets to use and the patient portal gave us that infrastructure to go there. So I think patients saw us as a partner when they really needed one. So. I'll leave it there, you know, happy to take questions during the um, during the Q&A time uh, later this morning. So thank you very much.